this is Mr. G recording uh, another lecture on, this is on chapter 27, it's lecture one for chapter 27. It will be covering pages 442 to 448, and it is on basic nutrition, and it's part of nutrition and fluids um, chapter. So dietary practices um, are very important. A person's diet affects their physical and mental well-being. We all know that we, how we feel when we eat, we always enjoy eating. Eating is usually a very social event. Um, and as you'll see with the uh, skill that we're going to do that, um, maintaining a social aspect of eating is very important. So a poor diet and poor eating habits can lead to a lot of um, health risks. One of them is it can increase the risk of infection. Um, many of the components that are needed to fight infection require nutritional or nutrients that you get from your diet to be able to maintain the white blood cells, the uh, all the other chemicals that go into fighting an infection. So, um, when you have a poor diet and poor eating habits, you will be, uh, you will have a difficult time fighting infection, and that's why many people who don't eat well tend to get sick more frequently. Um, <clears throat> it also increases the risk of acute and chronic diseases. Some of those chronic diseases include arteriosclerosis, uh, along with that cardiovascular disease, as well as high blood pressure, diabetes, osteoporosis. So there's many, many um, chronic diseases that are a result of um, people that, uh, that have not been eating well. Um, as, a, as a result, many chronic diseases can become worse because uh, of poor nutrition and poor eating habits. Um, so uh, it can cause healing problems as well. Um, <clears throat> as, as I said earlier, many of the components needed for healing and fighting infection um, re result only when all of those components or nutrients are available in the diet. And it also affects your physical and mental function, increasing the risk for accidents and injuries. When you don't, when you eat a lot of concentrated sweets, you tend to not be as, phys as mentally sharp as you would if you ate a more balanced diet. And also when you um, develop obesity, it's, um, you're more prone to developing accidents and injuries because of your body habitus or the, the way your, your, your obesity makes you difficult to balance, more, uh, more uh, stress on all of your joints, so a lot more um, prone to injuries. Culture, finances, and personal choice also affect uh, dietary practices. Um, as you know, uh, as part of any culture that you're part of, different foods play a very important role in um, in your cultural celebrations and your culture as, as a whole. Uh, finances, uh, unfortunately, play a very huge role in uh, dietary practices. Um, many of the foods that are less expensive uh, tend to have poor nutritional value. Uh, the ones that have good nutritional value, like fruits and vegetables, um, are very expensive to get fresh fruits and vegetables. So. Um, it plays a part in um, what people choose to eat, all right? Um, so let's go over some basic nutrition. Uh, nutrition is the process involved in the ingestion, the digestion, the absorption, and the use of foods and fluids by the body, okay? And we'll go over that in just a few minutes. We'll go over the ingestion, the digestion, and the absorption of the foods in the digestive tract. <clears throat> So good nu nutrition is needed for growth, healing, and body functions, and we've talked about that a little in the last slide. A well-balanced diet and correct calorie intake are needed, but even more importantly, along with a well-balanced diet is an activity level that matches the dietary intake so that calories that are, are taken in are used and they don't have to be stored as fat. Um, food and fluids uh, contain nutrients. Um, and those nutrients are the things that will um, be used by the body to um, repair things and build new things. 
um, and we'll go over what the nutrients are. Um, our nutrients are grouped into fats, uh, proteins, and carbohydrates, which are the, the main nutrients in, um, in foods, as well as vitamins and minerals and water. Uh, even though we don't consider, we probably in our minds don't consider water as a nutrient, it's a very important nutrient. In fact, most of our body is water. And because of that, it's very important that we have um, a good amount of water. Um, especially here in Florida, where we have warm weather, tend to sweat more. We have an insensible loss of fluid, meaning a, a loss of fluids that we really can't see, like in our urine or in our feces. Um, uh, it's it's uh, a loss that is just from the evaporation of the fluid from our skin. So a nutrient um, is one of those groups, um, but it, it basically is a substance that is ingested, digested, absorbed, and used by the body. So just as we talked about the definition of nutrition, nu nutrient is the small component of um, what makes nutrition. Um, so the amount of energy um, that we get from our nutrients is measured in calories. Uh, a calorie is the fuel or energy value of food. And when we talk about nutrition labels, we'll talk about calories a little more. <clears throat> so this is, uh, let's look at the nutrition component. So nutrition is the ingestion. So the ingestion of food into the mouth where it is broken down into pieces. And also there are some um, new, in, sal in the salivary juices, um, there are some digestive juices, one of them being amylase that starts to break down starches even in the mouth. Um, the food is then taken down the esophagus uh, into the stomach where it is once again sits here with hydrochloric acid and some other digestive juices that break down the food. Uh, generally, it sits here for about two to four hours. And then it enters the small bowel, and you really can't see the small, the entrance of the small bowel here, but it enters the small bowel, the first section, which is called the duodenum. It's under the liver here. In the duodenum, this first section is very important because all of the digestive, the remaining digestive juices, such as lipase and amylase, um, and uh, that break down the fat and the protein, the, those are the digestive juices that come from the pancreas and the gallbladder. The gallbladder uh, getting its contents of bile from the liver. So the liver produces the bile and it stores it in the gallbladder. When a fatty meal is eaten, um, the gallbladder contracts and sends all that bile into the, the duodenum where it helps to break down fats. Then the small bowel continues um, and once it gets into this area here it is now called the jejunum. The human body has 20 feet of small bowel and so the small bowel is where the the uh, foods that have been broken up into the nutrients are now absorbed in the small bowel. So somebody who has had a small bowel surgery where part of a large section of their small bowel has been removed have difficulty with absorbing nutrients. So it's a very important part of the bowel. And it ha does, does it very slowly because it's like I said, 20 feet of small bowel that the food, um, the digested food goes through. Then in the last part of the small bowel, which is called the ileum, the food enters into the large bowel. Okay, and this is the large bowel here. It's the ascending, the transverse, the descending, and then the sigmoid colon, which is sigmoid meaning S, um, and it forms an S shape before it goes into the pelvis and becomes the rectum and the anus, okay? Now, once it's in the large bowel, the large bowel's main purpose is for water absorption. So somebody who has had, the large bowel is known as the colon, all right? Somebody who has had colon surgery or removal of part of their colon, which is called a colectomy, 
um, they have many times difficulties with loose stools because the water absorption has been um, <clears throat> limited because part of that bowel has been removed. So that's an important thing to know for caring for patients who have had bowel surgery that um, they may have loose stools for a while. The body does um, accommodate and adjust and after a while their stools generally tend to not be as loose. All right. So that's the ingestion, the digestion, and the absorption of nutrients that the body will use um, to um, complete its processes. So dietary guidelines have been um, issued by um, the federal government and uh, it's called the dietary guidelines. They were made in, <clears throat> for Americans, um, uh, they were made in 2010 and they are guidelines to be used for uh, persons two years of age or older because uh, children less than two years need much more nutrients than what um, a, an adult would need or <clears throat> even a, a, a child would need. Um, their body processes are growing so quickly that they need a lot more nutrients. Um, the guidelines are also for persons at risk for chronic disease. Um, certain diseases, like I said, are, are linked to poor diet and lack of physical activity. And those include cardiovascular disease, hypertension, high blood pressure, um, diabetes, osteoporosis, obesity, and even some cancers have been um, determined to be caused by poor diet. Dietary guidelines help people attain and maintain their weight. It also reduces the risk of chronic diseases. <clears throat> it promotes overall health. Um, the guidelines essentially focus on consuming fewer calories and making informed food choices. Um, and we will talk about the My Plate system in just a second, which helps you um, be able to delineate um, how much of each nutrient you should have um, when you are eating. Um, also, becoming more physically active. That's an important part that I said before. It's one thing to bring in calories, but it's another thing to actually be able to use them. Otherwise, they have to be stored as fats. <clears throat> so the MyPlate symbol encourages healthy eating from five food groups, okay? Um, so those food groups are the grains, the vegetables, the fruits, dairy, and protein. And if you look on your book on page 446, it has a description of what each of those food groups contain. Um, and so you should read over those. Um, and it also includes a, a section on oils as well. Um, so be sure to read over those um, so that you have a good understanding of what is in each of those food groups. Uh, the MyPlate system was issued by the United States Department of Agriculture, or the USDA, and it helps people make wise food choices by balancing calories, increasing certain foods, uh, such as um, vegetables and fruits and grains, and reducing certain foods, uh, which are the fats and the proteins, um, because although proteins are very important in our body, uh, we uh, don't need as much as what we ingest many times, especially with the amount of eat meat that uh, the American culture eats. So the USDA recommends that adults do at least one of the following, two and a half hours <clears throat> of each week of moderate physical activity. And if you look at your book on page 445, uh, box number 27-1, you'll see uh, what is considered um, physical, uh, moderate physical activity. So that's walking briskly, bicycling, gardening, dancing, golfing, water aerobics, canoeing, and tennis. Um, whereas vis vigorous uh, physical activity, um, they only are recommending an hour and 15 minutes each week, but that includes some pretty, um, <clears throat> some pretty heavy activities. Uh, running and jogging five miles an hour, walking very fast, four and a half miles per hour, and you can read the rest of those. So it involves a, a pretty vigorous activity, but either one of those are recommendations to help maintain good health um, in the American 
called American Society. Okay, and here's a picture of the my plate. Um, notice that vegetables and grains have the highest um, percentage of what is recommended to be taken in daily. Um, fruits have a smaller uh, portion as well as protein fruits because they're very high in um, natural sugars and protein because most proteins um, are high in fat and then a small part of um, a small portion of dairy as well and dairy would also include cheeses so um, I know most of us love cheese but um, it also it has a high fat content as well all right so nutrients um, let's go over them protein is the most important nutrient protein has four calories per gram um, it's used for tissue growth and repair. Most of our body is composed of protein, so it is a very important component in uh, the diet. But the unfortunate thing is many sources of protein are uh, linked with fat as well, and that's where the uh, danger comes in. So it's good to have um, uh, lean sources of protein. Carbohydrates, uh, which also provide four calories per gram, uh, provide energy and fiber for bowel elimination. Um, so the biggest part is providing the energy, the quick energy that is needed by the body. Any carbohydrates that are in excess are uh, stored as fat. And so um, the balance is to try to get just enough carbohydrates to maintain good energy level, but uh, to not um, provide enough that it will need to be stored as fat. And then also fats provide energy um, in, in, in their storage form. Um, they provide energy when you have a sudden need for um, calories or you need, um, yeah, a sudden need for calories and yet um, you're, you're not taking in food. What will happen? Well, your body will um, break down fats to be able to provide that energy. Um, they also provide help with use of certain vitamins. So. If you look in your book on page um, 20, uh, I'm sorry, on page 447, there's a box 27, table 27 hyphen 2, which has some of the common vitamins. Now, there are four of those vitamins that are fat soluble, uh, meaning that they need fat to be able to, um, to become solutions. So um, those four are A, D, E, and K, ADEC. Um, is the, um, the acronym to be able to remember that, but A, D, E, and K are fat-soluble vitamins. So, um, and all the others are water-soluble. The one thing with fat-soluble vitam vitamins is when you have too much of it, your body won't get rid of the excess. Whereas with water-soluble vitamins, if you take in too many of those, uh, your body gets rid of what it doesn't need. So you can get some toxicities on too many of the A, D, E, or K, all right? Vitamins are needed for certain body functions. So um, th essentially they are ingredients that help the body um, be able to work with the first three nutrients, the protein, the carbohydrates, and the fats. So vitamins are very important for all of those processes um, uh, in the body. Um, minerals are also used for many body processes. Um, minerals include a lot of electrolytes, and uh, many of those are needed in muscle activity, in nervous system activity. So minerals are, are very important as well. And if you look in your book on uh, page 448, um, there is table 27 hyphen 3 which has some of the common minerals um, that um, are found in foods and that the body uses um, and then water is needed for all of the body processes all right <clears throat> so let's talk a minute about food labels i think we've all seen on all foods in that are sold in the united states have to have a food label which includes the um, ingredients or the nutrients that are found in that food. Um, they're essentially used, they should be used to make informed choices uh, in choosing foods for a healthy diet. Um, I don't think they're, they're 
is a large portion of the population that uh, spends a lot of time reading it because if they did, they probably would put some of the things back on the counter um, because uh, or on the shelves in the in the supermarket because the um, calorie content or the nutrient content is not that great. So what they contain, the food labels contain the serving size and the number of servings in each package. And that's a very important component when we go over the, the label. The number of servings in the package can be quite frightening because sometimes you will pick up a bag of chips and you will think that that is just one serving. However, when you look, it's probably four servings. And because of that, you look at just the calorie content, but that calorie content is just telling you how much is in one serving size. So then you have to multiply the total calories that it's showing you by how many servings are in that package, which can sometimes be quite frightening. Um, so it tells you, the labels tell you also the calories and the calories that are from fat. Um, it tells you the nutrients that are in it. It tells you how that serving fits into a daily diet or the daily value. So that is based on a 2,000 calorie per day diet. And what it does is it takes each of the nutrients and tells you the amount that's found in this package will provide you this percentage of what is expected for you to have uh, the daily for that particular nutrient. We'll, we'll, it'll make more sense when we go over the, the uh, label in just a second. So the daily value is a percent based on a 2,000 calorie diet, diet. And here is the nutritional labels. This is the current nutritional labels, but they are looking that they're going to revise them to look more like this which I think is better because it not only has the calories very uh, easily seen, but also how many servings per container, um, which is an important part to look at. So here you see that there are eight servings per container and the, cal the cup, two thirds of a cup is considered one serving. I wish they would have listed what the particular item was because it would have um, helped us be able to <clears throat> see, get an appreciation for what um, this, this is um, dealing with. Um, but you see here, the calories are 230. They're, for this particular item, somebody would pick it up and see calories 230. Oh, that's not bad. Not realizing that there are eight servings per, uh, in that container. So uh, it, sometimes the, just looking at the calories gives you a false sense of how calorie rich something is. All right, then let's look at the nutrients. Um, so here, the total fat is eight grams, which is 12% of the total fat that you need for the day, okay? That's provided in one serving. Uh, it breaks it down into saturated fats and trans fats. Trans fats are the dangerous fats, although saturated fats, um, you know, are not that they're not dangerous. They just are less apt to lead to some of the arteriosclerosis that, um, that you have in your body, but they still will um, cause just as much um, fat, you know, um, content in your body. <clears throat> Cholesterol is also a type of fat. It is a fat that is produced by animals. So something that is non-animal uh, cannot have cholesterol, like plants don't have cholesterol. Um, so um, this particular item had zero. The amount of sodium, 160 milligrams. So what it's saying is in a, on a 2000 calorie diet, that 160 milligrams is only 7% of the sodium that you need, that's recommended for you to take in in a day. And then it does the same with carbohydrates. It breaks them up into simple sugars um, or and dietary fiber, because dietary fiber will help you metabolize carbohydrates better. It will help them go through your system quicker. Um, and um, so um, you want to make sure that your carbohydrates have a high component of dietary fiber as well. And then um, your proteins, it doesn't give you a percentage here, but it tells you how many grams of protein and then the other uh, vitamins and minerals um, that are in this product. Um, so that is what a nutritional label will give you for information. 
that will end um, this lecture number one on basic nutrition, um, and we will see you in class. Thanks for your attention.